What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Paper Planes channel. This is my Dark Souls 2 Ultimate Walkthrough. We're back at Majula and we're going to visit the bonfire and we're going to do some traveling. We're going to go to the Shaded Woods at the Shaded Ruins Bonfire. Okay, so we're here at the bonfire. We're going to move forward just a little bit and head up this rampway here. Turn the corner and we see a nice shiny loot waiting for us. Just grab this life gem, drop down, Head around this edge here and go down these stairs. Gonna loot this chest. Magic bolts. Okay, and after you get those bolts, we're going to head back up the rampway here. Now, what I want you to do from this point is we're gonna leap off this ledge and destroy that pot really quickly. So once that's dead, we're gonna run over here and we're gonna use our fragrant branch on this petrified lion. Once you do that, I suggest you run over this branch right here and let the lion come to you. You don't wanna fight them on that area where you can just fall off the ledge like that. So you're gonna bait out an attack and then we'll get two swings. Oh shit! They hardly ever do that combo by the way. That's what's normally gonna happen. And we grab that fang key from him. I like when I'm trying to explain something and the bastard enemy AI does something completely out of the norm. So as you can see there, you might get effed up. Now, if you rest at the bonfire, he will respawn, so he'll be over there and he will not be petrified, so he'll just be a regular enemy like normal. And once you start moving, he'll begin to pursue you, so. You can rest at the bonfire and be safe as long as you're not moving around. If you start moving, he's going to notice you and then he's going to walk over across this fallen tree and try to attack you. So don't do that if you're not ready for him. Alright, so now what we can do is continue across this pathway here. Now when you exit this area here, there's going to be a lot of enemies and more of the same lions. And then there's going to be this giant basilisk. Basilisk. So what I suggest you do is just run up here, make sure that they're chasing you, and then run in here, drop down and through, and then out. Now we've got a little bit of time to let that curse wear off, then we can come in here and wreck these uh, vases. So just let the build up wear down. Those enemies actually can't follow you through the doorway because of the way that it's set up they're actually a little bit too bulky to fit through the door so they're just stuck up there okay so now we can walk up the stairs we've got one right here and then there's one up above it that's still hitting us so we're gonna stand in a safe spot switch to our range weaponry and then go to our binoculars target that and then kill it boom now we can go to our melee weapon because these guys have pretty good magic resistance so what we're gonna do is just come up close bait out a swing get two swings in evade same thing all right now we get some nice loot from him that's just a random drop so we'll get this other guy to chase us too you can find him out in the open by himself by his self if you want to Alright, once he's dead, come over here and loot this item off the corpse. There's nothing else over here at the moment. What we're going to do is head back into this room. Just drop down. Come back into the open area here. Go to the left and destroy this pot. Now you can hear a crystal lizard around the corner, so what I want you to do is go ahead and target it. And then switch to your casting. And go to your heavier sorcery spells. It's going to take three casts usually to kill this guy. 
He's well worth it, and he's got nowhere to really go, so he's pretty easy. He's probably one of the easiest crystal lizards to kill in the game. So you get all that nice loot. Now we can switch back to our melee stuff. And then we're going to come over here, loot this chest. Ba -da -da -da. The Dark Scythe. So let's check this guy out. I'm actually using my PS4 controller right now, so it's feeling a little bit different for me. I have been using my Xbox 360 for the PC play, so if I mess up on button presses or something like that, and you're wondering why, that's what it is. All right. So we're going to go to our equipment here, and there is our Dark Scythe. A scythe fitted with a large custom blade has an extended slashing reach when swung broadly, but beware, these attacks make the wielder very vulnerable. So obviously something that you're holding with wide sweeping attacks, it's good, it's going to hit a lot of enemies, but also leaves you vulnerable for a longer amount of time because it's a heavier, wider swinging weapon. So you can see here that it requires 20 strength and 11 dexterity so this is definitely an item that we can use very soon if we choose to get our strength up to 20 so that's just something to consider if you want to do that and of course it's got dark properties uh, already imbued on it so lucky us all right navigate out of this screen here and what we're gonna do is get a little bit of a running leap to jump over that and then we're just gonna drop down here don't worry about that man scorpion over there he's totally harmless now we've got a gold lion over here He's a little bit tougher than the other ones. He's got slightly better attacks sometimes. Basically, he'll use his combos a little bit more often than the other ones will. But there we made easy work of him. Now we've got an item here to loot, just a torch. Nothing spectacular. But there is another petrified dude right here and because most likely you only have one fragrant branch available in your inventory this is not the place to use it so do not use it right here we're going to use that later on in this episode when we pick up another one and picking up the other one is totally dependent upon having one already so don't waste it yet so we're going to run out of there and then we're going to go back to our inventory and we're going to swap out one of our rings and don't worry we won't leave it off but we're going to put the ring of whispers on for the moment and then we're going to approach this guy now he will not attack you either way so don't worry if you don't have the ring you can still approach him but you just won't be able to interact with him in any meaningful manner so we're going to go through all the conversation options here okay so now that we're done talking to tark we're going to go back to our inventory and swap out the ring with something that we prefer i'm trying to remember i think i had the ring of steel protection on not quite sure, but that'll work either way. And we're going to head to the stairs here. Run all the way around. And then back out. So we're going to go up these stairs. Now remember, we've killed all these curse pots, so it's a safe area right now. And what you see here is we've got that large basilisk there, and then he's got a little warrior guarding him right now, but he's not always located in that area, and you can see he kind of roams around. What we're going to do is switch to our catalyst and our binoculars, stay at a range like this. Anything past this tree right here should be safe. And then we're going to target the basilisk and start doing damage from far away. A big bug-eyed basilisks. So let your stamina regenerate. And it just reminded me, I actually need to uh, switch up to, with some of the rings that we got in the previous episode. We picked up two extremely important rings for our build. All right, so go to your inventory and we're gonna get the Chlorinthy ring plus one and the clear bluestone ring plus one. And we picked up both of those rings in the last episode, so if you missed that, be sure to check that one out as well. Okay, so now we're gonna be much more effective with our gear. And uh, we don't have any present danger, so what we're gonna do is come in here and destroy these pots. Now we're gonna loot this chest. It's not trapped or a mimic. Thank Jeebus. Human Effigy and Blood Serum, both times three. That's a pretty good grab right there. Three Human Effigies is quite the value. So here we've got another Curse Pot. Just destroy that and then back out a little bit. 
grab this petrified dragon bone. Now, we want to draw this guy out. We don't ever want to fight them in multiples. So, if they do hit us, they do a lot of curse buildup and pretty significant damage. So, I'm going to show you what they do with just a shield up. You can see there, over a quarter curse damage. So, you do not want to fight these guys in groups. I mean, I don't think you ever want to fight anything in groups, period. But, especially something that does such a high buildup through a shield. Okay. Okay. Once you kill that foo, we're going to move through here. Got that one last pot there, and then we're going to run up this stair. Grab this item. Another Pharaoh's Lockstone. There's quite a few uh, pretty key loot items here. We've got another bad boy sitting right there. We might be able to sneak up on him a little bit. Nope. Should have landed a backstab. Just doesn't work as... I'd hope sometimes. Bring him away from that pot, of course. A little bit of a delay there. Alright. Now we'll go kill this pot. It's probably faster to roll in them than it is to swing. But, um... It's also advised to roll as well because you won't be damaging your weapon durability. Now I suggest running over here. He'll get aggroed and then walk into that platform trap there. So whenever you see those planks there, they're just covering up a big hole. And there's actually another area in this level that has the same kind of, of camouflaged hole on it. So I'll point that out and be sure that you know of it. But we're actually intentionally going to drop down in that one. So... The, the dangerous part about this trap here is that when you fall down in it, there's a bunch of little basil basilisks down there. So if you're not prepared for it, they're probably going to get to you. And then those pools down there, they're acid pools and they damage your uh, durability as well. So we could come over here real quick before I forget. Destroy these pots. And then we're going to line ourselves up with this doorway and come to the left and sprint. Sprint jump. Oh my god, I jumped way too early. No big deal. Run back around. Do it right this time. And now we're going to loot this chest. Titanite Chunk and Petrified Dragon Bone. And we, that's uh, really good because we should be able to upgrade our sword or our catalyst right now. Whichever one we choose. Typically, I'm going to upgrade my sword more than my catalyst just because we use it just a little bit more often. So come over here. Let him aggro towards us. And then get in the last shot. Come over here. Destroy this guy. Now when we run in here, make sure you get this pot. Always kill barrels or anything that you can destroy. That way you just make sure that you're picking up all the loot items that are available. So we're going to use this Fragrant Branch. This is the one that we've been saving it for. And there's lots of gear here and we're going to get another Fragrant Branch. So this is really a great, uh, great find here. All right, so when we come in here, we're going to turn around the left corner. There's going to be two more pots, and then we're going to open this chest and get the nice Lion Mage armor set, I believe. This is going to be something that we're going to wear. Yep, the Lion Mage set, and we get that fragrant branch of yore. So basically, we got all this gear for free because we didn't truly use our fragrant branch because it was an even swap. So we're going to go into our equipment and I'm going to start putting on these uh, lion robes here. And the reason we're doing that is you can see here, it's got a positive effect of improving casting speed. So we're going to go to our player status after we equip certain armors just to check out the difference. So we've got a cast speed of uh, 124. And if you can't see that, it is located right there, casting speed. So now you know what I'm looking at. And uh, we'll go back to our inventory and let's swap out our gloves with the lion mage cuffs. And now we can check out that status and you can see it's bumped us up to 131 casting speed so it does stack 
so you don't have to worry about just putting one casting speed boost item on you can put on as many as you need to get the most performance out of it so let's also do that with our boots so we're going to go to uh, the lion mage skirt okay so we're just going to equip those three items that we just picked up and now we're going to exit here Oh, we're looking mighty fancy now, everybody. Okay, so there's going to be an item in this area here. So we're going to go up this winding stair set. Come on. Climb the stairs. Ah! Uh, and it's hanging on this body off the edge here. Soul of a brave warrior and some skeptic spice. We're picking up a lot of spice lately, but we're probably not ever going to use it. It's definitely a useful piece of gear or an item to pick up, but we're not going to use it in this uh, playthrough. So here's the second area where you're going to fall through, and it's totally safe, so don't freak out when you do fall. But we need to intentionally fall. We're going to get this homing soul mass, I believe. This is a really good spell for us. Okay, and we'll go into our inventory and check that out. Whoops. And it's going to be the one with the five little circles on it. The homing soul mass. Multiple soul masses appear above the head. When fired, they home in on their target. This spell was said to have been devised by a master sorcerer, but his name is long forgotten. You can see here that it takes one attunement slot, and it needs 24 intelligence to cast, and it gives you four uses. So here we're going to talk to Grindal. This is, again, the second opportunity we have to speak with him. And we need to speak with him in all three of his locations to join his covenant. All right, so after you talk to him, which is really short, he's only got about two sentences to say, we're just going to drop down. Now, if you go to the left, you're going to be able to exit where we originally came in, um, came into the zone, basically. You'll see the petrified lion walking around. He's over there. And then a bonfire is close by. So that's where we're going to exit, but not now. We're going to navigate around this area and make sure that you stay out of the pools. Switch to your range spell. Now there's going to be two basilisks to the left and two basilisks to the right. So I suggest killing one in each room first and then you can rush in whichever room you choose and melee the next one. So we can see that guy. So he's going to be our first victim when he comes out. Now they're pretty soft and our great heavy soul arrow will kill them pretty easily. So know that it's only going to take one cast. Try to get your uh, target on him. Now you're going to switch back to your melee and just rush in. This other one will come to you. But because you're inside the room where the wall is separating you, he's not going to start casting his curse uh, spit, essentially, until he can get in close and actually has his eyes on you. So it keeps you safe in that aspect. But they do drop items, so you can pick that up, and that's a pretty good drop right there. And then there should be an item in the room. Did I just miss it, or did I already pick it up? I guess I picked it up and I wasn't paying attention. But anyways, this is where we're going to use the key. And this is the key that we got from using our fragrant branch on the first lion in the zone. It's the Fang key. And this opens up an NPC that we can talk to. And we also get an Estus Flask Shard, which is excellent for us. So let's talk to this NPC. They don't have much to say, but what they say is important, and they're actually going to be in a nearby zone in the near future. And when we interact with them then, we'll be able to use them in the same way that we use Strayed, in the sense that we can exchange boss souls for nice, upgraded, powerful weapons. So keep that in mind. This is another merchant that we're going to be dealing with that has premium items. So do not attack them, even though they look like an enemy from Dark Souls 1. All right, so now that we've gotten out of this room... We're going to go back to the entrance of this cave where we first were, drop down, and you can just run up here if you want. You don't really have to do any combat with this guy. You can tap the bonfire. Okay, so once we've got everything the way that we want it, we're just going to head off from the bonfire here, and we're basically going to sprint through this zone. And uh, you're going to see me bypass all these enemies. And we're going to do this a couple times eventually just because we've got to get to the boss. And then after we kill the boss, we're going to come back through this zone to speak with Tark. So it's really easy to navigate through this area. 
but we will have to summon Tark when we get up to the top. So make sure that you've used a uh, human effigy. So summon the Phantom. And we're going to go to our Great Heavy Soul Arrows and our Catalyst. So once he spawns, we're going to go ahead and enter the Fog Gate. Now the boss is right in the middle there, and they're hard to see, obviously, because it's just a torso. But they're going to start casting spells. And the spells are pretty powerful, so what you're going to do is target them. And in fact, usually the first hit that you make doesn't do much damage, so use a weaker spell. So now we're going to go back to our Great Heavy Soul Arrow. Tark is really weak. He gets his ass kicked. But sometimes he stuns the, uh, the main boss, so it's really good in that aspect. And he's going to distract her for a little while. Now you see that item in the back right corner on that tree? We do not care about that item. It's just a, um, a butterfly, a flame butterfly. So it really is useless to us. So just keep this tactic. Stay as far away as you can while hitting her with sorceries. Oh, I should have paid attention to that. That's really the only thing that we need to worry about. As you see, she's using the homing soul mass, the spell that we just picked up, actually. So I need to get out of here. Alright, so once your spells are out, now keep in mind, if you want to go to melee, you can. It's really easy to get in there and kill her, but you just, it's better to be safe. So there she is. She's gone and dead. Tark did his job. It's not uncommon for Tark to die because he does not have a lot of health compared to how much damage she deals. But he's definitely capable of distracting her long enough for you to kill him or kill her or take most of her health away. So you can see there, really, the only the only danger for us is that sorcery. So as long as you're looking in the right direction, you should be able to see it. Um, for whatever reason, when I was staring at her when she landed her first sorceries, I didn't see it until it was way too late, and I was in the middle of casting while it was coming at me, so that's why I took the brunt of that damage. Now, um, you can see there, the only way to get this item is if you're standing around it, and the boss does a melee attack and destroys the... The element right here the piece of tree so it, like I said if you're wondering what it is it's totally pointless it's just a flame butterfly so I didn't feel like showing you how to get that because nobody really cares at that point so we're gonna continue through here and this is going to lead us to the next zone and what we're gonna do in here is just get to the bonfire and then we're gonna return to the previous bonfire so just keep going. And we get to the doors of Pharos. Now this is a big bad elephant man off in the distance. And we've got some water to move through. So you want to be careful while you're in here. Make sure that you target from far away. Get your damage done there. Now if, you, if you're slowed down and you want to get on solid ground to avoid or do some faster damage make sure that you get over to these rocks here now you can target this guy if you want to he's gonna come at you eventually anyways you can see how much damage they take they're really soft so they're not much of a threat and that goes just right through his shield now switch back to your shield I'm gonna go pick up the soul item here we get 10 prism stones now there's a chest here, and uh, like usual, you should be cautious of it. It does seem like it's in an awkward location. Dark leggings and a black scorpion stinger. We'll check that out in a moment, but first I want to come in here and get to the bonfire. All right, so our bonfire is lit. Let's go to our inventory and check out that black stinger. 
Man Scorpion Tark's Thrusting Sword. The Scorpion Pincer Guard contains poison which is injected into foes pierced by the blade. Tark's past is a thing obscure, but then again, do any of us know who we are, let alone what we may have been? Okay, pretty deep stuff there. You can see it takes 10 strength to wield, or, uh, yeah, 10 strength to wield and 18 dexterity. Er, uh, that was pretty awesome. Intelligence just oozing out of my mouth. So we'll back out of that, and uh, we're going to tap the bonfire to travel. We're going to go down to the Shaded Wood and go to the Shaded Ruins. And even if you killed the boss and went back to Tark's area, you'd still need to actually leave the zone or rest at a bonfire completely to put put Tark in the area where he needs to be. So that's why we actually have to leave the zone. So it was more beneficial for us to get to that bonfire first and travel back here. Otherwise, we'd be doing uh, a whole lot more running around than necessary. So we're going to switch out the ring with our Ring of Whispers so that we can speak with Tark when we find him. Anytime you hear that weird sound, that just means that there's an enemy nearby. So it is good in telling you that there's something dangerous around you as well. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to sprint through this area. Don't waste your time fighting. None of these guys can follow you through that doorway. And just drop down here. And we're going to talk to Tark. You've defeated this is my... So Tark gives us the fragrant branch of yours, so yet we get another fragrant branch. So now we have two in our inventory. Continue talking to him and burn through his conversation, and you get the learn gesture warm up. And also burn through the rest of his combo. And then we can leave him. Now, if you want, you can go back to your inventory, and I don't know why you wouldn't want to, but we're going to go back to the clear bluestone ring plus one. And we're going to move through this area again. Now, this enemy is still alive now, so we're going to have to deal with him. Once he's dead, we're going to come out of his area here, and now we're going to use one of the fragrant branches on this lion. Now you can hear there's a basilisk up to the right. The good thing about this guy is he's got his back to you, so you can get in a nice backstab. So he's literally the easiest one to kill. So when we come up the stairway, there's going to be a basilisk to the right, so just get ready to deal with him and we're gonna loot this item here we get twilight herb and a soul of a brave warrior which is pretty good that's quite a few souls right there now what we're gonna do is get a running start and make sure that you jump into that doorway there and we get to loot this black knight halberd if I remember correctly oh yeah all right so to get out of here we're just going to run and jump, but in fact, we don't need to do all that hocus pocus because we're just going back to the bonfire, so use a homeward bone. All that hocus pocus. I'm real fresh with my verbiage. Super cool for all you kiddos out there. So hit the uh, bonfire, and we're going to travel back to Majula. Damn, Sean. Why are you so cool, man? I don't know guys, I'm just fucking cool like that, I guess. So when we hear uh, when we land here, we're gonna use our Estes Flask shard. Here to see you, however. Give me that. Upgrade my shit. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna leave here. Run into the blacksmith. It's gonna upgrade some of our gear, not buy, reinforce. Go to the sword. And now we're going to go to our armor and start upgrading some of the stuff that we're wearing. So I want to start with the robes. And basically use the smaller Titanite shards. Just do it to plus three. Awesome. And you can upgrade this if you want. 
and we'll leave. Now we still got some souls to spend, so you can go ahead and upgrade. So we're gonna do some leveling up. What do we got? What do we got? Two more levels. Oh yeah. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. Leave a comment in the section below. Be sure to subscribe to me here on my YouTube channel and follow me on my social media accounts. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me there, at Paper Plains Sean for both of those. And you can follow me on Twitch as well. It's twitch.tv front slash paper planes channel and I've got all this detailed in the information in the video description as well for you lazy bums out there I know I got that request and I usually have that information but I guess I forgot to include twitch so now you knows so click on that stuff if you want some easy simple access to my other social media and entertainment endeavors thanks a lot guys for checking it out stay tuned for next episode as always I'm your host Sean Peace. Hey guys, thank you so much for visiting my channel. I know there's lots of awesome content on YouTube, and it really means a lot you chose to view my videos. I hope you enjoyed them and will join me on my other social media accounts. And of course, subscribe here to become a part of the Paper Planes YouTube community.